Hey friends, I hope you're having an awesome day. Today I'm going to show you around the Universal Control app for the PreSonus Studio Live Series 3 mixers. This app really helps the functionality of your console, and I wouldn't like to set it up without it. So let's jump in. The first thing you're going to do after downloading and installing it, which I assume you can do that, is you're going to hook it up from your console to your computer with a USB cable, or you can use an Ethernet cable if that's what you've got and you'd prefer. So I've already launched Universal Control. You can see here, there's my Studio Live 32 console. So double click on that and that's going to launch Universal Control. Now you can see here, I've got things set up and I'm in the fat channel view right now. But if you want a different view or if you've got different functions, let's check those out. So I hit the gear wheel here and we can see the device mode right here. That's pretty important for what way you want the screen to show up over here. Now, if you're just getting things set up and you're starting, I like to go into mixer mode. This shows me an overview of the mixer. We've got our faders over here. And this section over here on the right is like the mix select over here on the left of the physical console. So you can see uh, we can select aux one, aux three, whatever we want to do here, or FXD, or we can go to main. We hit main and we can see that over here as well. Now one setting back here that I want to show you is this sync select option. This is really helpful for me, especially if I'm using the computer and the console together. I want to make it so that whenever I select something here on the console, it is also what channel comes up over here uh, in the control section. Now this matters more when I'm uh, in fat channel control, right? So I hit different buttons on here and you can see they pop up here in the different sections. Now, the best thing about uh, having the console connected to your computer is the ability to name things using a real keyboard. Because you can na change names on the console with the touch screen. But let me show you how well that goes right now. So, Let's rename SPD. We're gonna to get to the gear wheel. We're gonna hit channel name. And we're gonna hit this X here a couple times. And we're gonna name it drum machine. Okay, not terrible, but not as fast as I can type on the computer. So I'm gonna go fast instead of going slow. I'm gonna hook it up to the computer and do it that way. So hit enter, it changed it. We can do that. We can also change the color over here as well. Those are kind of fun. I didn't show you that last time. We've got some other options, but we'll go over that in a different video. So we've got drum machine, that's selected there. Or we can do it on the computer. We come over here and we select the channel. Where'd it go? Oh, here it is. So we select that one and we double click it, it's good to go. So the other thing that's weird is that when you have to name something, you have to name both the left and the right channel. You can name them different. So I would say, if this was all synths instead of SPD, I could put, and they're stereo linked, I could put synth on this one, and on the right side, I could hit pad. So then when it shows up on the console, it says synth pad, I can pan it left and right, it's stereo linked. And there you go, that's how that works. We can see the channel parameters over here. You can do all this fun stuff with, you know, logos and all that. Drum pad, hey, there we go. And so that shows up there. It doesn't change anything on the console that I see on here, on these scribble strips. Let's see if I do it here and go to the input. I don't see it anywhere. So. It can be helpful, but it's it's not gonna change your life, right? You still have to mix and do stuff. You can't just play with icons all day, okay? So here we go, get out of that. Uh, we've got all our fat channel control stuff around here. We've got our fader adjustments here. It is kind of fun to be able to drag around with the mouse and see a phantom fader move, especially if you wanna make somebody do a double take that's not used to being in the sound booth, right? Uh, that can be fun to do that that way. Again, the things that will trip you up are making sure that you're on the main layer here, as opposed to 
uh, choosing aux channels and things like that for that. So there's your aux masters, but making sure that you're on the main fader level, layer here is gonna be helpful. Now, I'm not sure why it's not, uh, channel selection is doing that, but it's not changing it when I do um, the groups here. So hitting aux seven on the screen doesn't hit aux seven over here as well. I'm not sure why it does that. Looking at the channel control while we're in the mixer view, you can turn on and off the different processors with the on off button. You can swap the order of the EQ and compressor with this button here, and then it'll show you, basically we're flowing from left to right over here on the screen. You know, we've got our input, we've, we've got our gate, then we have the equalizer, then the compressor, then the limiter, then it goes to the channel fader. So you can follow that logically through left to right because in the West we read left to right. right? Uh, let's see what else we've got here. Oh, we can select which equalizer type we have or the compressor type that we have with this little drop down menu. So I've bought the plugin pack to you know expand uh, the number of you know EQ options that I have. The ones that come with the console are passive, which is like a Pultec, and vintage, which is like Neve style. Although they won't tell you that in the literature because there's like trademark stuff, but that's what it is. Uh, the rest of them are fun. I made a couple videos on those. I'll throw them up here. Compressors, same thing. Again, uh, one thing to note, does it on the physical console, and we'll talk about this in the fat channel processing as well. When you switch types, it automatically switches out or off the compressor or EQ. So you have to go back, even when you go back to standard, it's bypassed when you do that and you have to turn it on again. So one of the quirks that you've got to look out for, you can thank me when you remember that. The other way we can look at this is fat channel, right? So this gives us a bigger overview of all the different parameters, you know, as they're going. So again, if we hit, you know, swapping equalizer and compressor, then that's gonna change the channel order there and they change the order on the screen there. This just makes it bigger. So if you wanna do that, do that. There's the limiter, you can turn it on and off. And then you can get around to the different channels this way you know, with a drop down menu, or you can do one at a time. Uh, I can attest that going one at a time over and over again is not fun. So maybe you don't wanna do that. Another thing you can do for this device, so this app was made to be run on devices that you could set up as separate, you know, control things. So you could show just metering. So you can see all your input meters in one spot. Or you can do all your sends so that you can see all your sends for a particular send that is selected. Or where all of this channel, let's see, we've got our input channel over here, and then our aux sends that that channel is going to, are over here. So we can see, you know, we've got our effects send for our overheads going to effects A, which is our drum reverb. So that's the way that that's set up. We can change the channel over here. So our piano, you know, this is going over here. And yeah, there's some funky stuff going on in this scene, but that's okay. It's just to show you guys, I'm not actually running a show with this. Uh, let's see what else we need to do here. We can also change the network settings. We can back up the console, which I recommend doing quite often because you never know when somebody can come and mess stuff up, right? You don't wanna to have to redo all the work that you did setting it up. You just wanna have a backup. So professionals back up their work. Uh, it's also where you can authorize the plugins and do the different user profiles and the digital patching. So digital patching is kind of like playing Minesweeper, right? We choose what, uh, what channel input is going to what channel output or what physical input or network input or whatever is going to what input channel or outputs too. But when you get there, it looks a lot like this. If it's in the nice straight line, you're safe. This is the safe thing to do. When you start moving stuff around and having channel three show up on channel seven and channel five show up on channel two, it looks like Minesweeper for a reason, right? You can get yourself into a lot of trouble. So try to avoid having your setup need a lot of digital patching if you can, but it's there if you need it. 
Uh, you can change the analog sends and what's going where. I was messing around with some stuff earlier, so that was in a different spot. Mix 13 is going to Mix 13 and Mix 15, so we'll move that. And we can do all that there. So we can reset, we can do a bunch of different stuff and all of that. This is also where you give devices permission. So if you have uh, your setup is so that people are mixing their own in-ear monitors from an app controlling an, a mix on the console, this is where all that would happen. Uh, you can have them change different mix and you can give an access code to them so that they can log in so that any Joe Schmo in the audience can't just log into your console and start changing mixes. That would be dangerous. Although I'm not sure how many audio engineers are going to shows and messing with settings on the console. If you're one of those people, just stop right now. Just stop. You can also check for firmware updates. PreSonus is good about finding bugs and fixing them. They've got a great database on their website for you know, issues and getting things resolved. So if you have any problems, definitely reach out to them. I've had great customer support from them when I've had any issues. And that's pretty much all that we're going to go over here for Universal Control. So it's a fantastic app. I'm really glad that they have this included. I prefer staying in mixer mode or fat channel mode. It just gives me what I need to see when I need to see it. And it makes it a lot easier to set up your console from scratch. If you're going from an input list and typing things in, it's much easier to type it than to punch it in on the screen there. So I highly recommend it. If you wanna check out more videos in this series, I've got a playlist up here. You can go ahead and hit thumbs up if you like this video. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll try to get back to you as fast as I can. I read all your comments, even though I don't reply to every single one. I do try. And reach out to the people at PreSonus if you have any questions as well. They're super helpful uh, for answering anything that you need to know. That's it for this video. Hit subscribe. Don't ding the bell because you don't need any more notifications in your life. Hit thumbs up, leave a comment, do all that fun stuff. We'll see you back here next time on Adway Audio.